All right, Jake. Get hold of me, Jake. I got you. This horse is wild. My name is Jeff Shear. I'm a professional cowboy and a picket man at the rodeos. I rode bucking horses for probably 20 years professionally, made a living doing what they did. I know Bob rode bucking horses and Matt did also, so it gives you a different kind of appreciation for the picket man if they've done it before because they know exactly what goes into this. To be a good picket man, the number one the number one tool is your horse. You have to have a good horse and a broke horse that knows what they're doing. <laughs> you can't just say, I'm gonna be a picket man. You gotta have equipment, horses, and knowledge. The biggest part is knowledge. Um, the second thing to make you, in my opinion, to make you a good picket man is your help. I got gotcha. you, Bobby. Yep, always. That might leave a mark. If, if it wasn't for, for guys like Bob Marriott, Matt Twixland, myself, the Cowboys, that they're making a living. They're going up and down the road riding bucking horses. And we are their safety. You know, they get on a bucking horse, they're trying to make a living doing it. They're giving all they have in that eight seconds when the whistle blows and it's time to get off that bucking horse. If we're not on our game and taking care of them, they can get really hurt and then they're out. Then they can't feed their family and get down the road. Well, one thing about being a pickup horse, they have to be the best athlete in the arena. You know, you have $100,000 barrel horses and $80,000 rope horses and calf roping horses and like that, but the pickup horse actually has to be the most versatile horse in the arena. They gotta be able to run fast, stop, turn, stay on their butt, do everything, and so they get worked harder than any horse in the arena. When the wreck happens in the arena, a lot of people are running from the wreck. The pickup man is the first one that runs to it. It's the same with the bullfighters and anything else. So if there's a, a guy hung up or something like that, we're, I, I don't really know how to explain it. It's something that, to be a good pickup man, it's just in your blood. You're riding in there, two guys and trying to control a bucking horse and get the guy to safety and they get the horse out of there. So there's almost as much action there as there is in the, in the actual eight seconds. It's not something that you ride straight in the arena and your horse knows how to be a pickup horse. It takes a lot of work and they have to have a talent and it helps if they're a little on the bronchi side. You know, they can't be the gentlest horse in the arena because a lot of times the bucking horses scare them. You gotta have pick up horses that actually actually want to go in there and mix it up like they're in a prize fight. You know, because if you're riding some backyard horse and you ride in there and a bucking horse going across there, it scares them. Being a pickup man is it's there's such an adrenaline rush and it's it's just addictive. So once you start doing it, it's one of the funnest things in the world to do. You're going 30 miles an hour, slide in there to a bucking horse sometimes, getting a flank and it's cool. Being a pickup man's cool. Um, I'm not, obviously I'm not gonna be able to pick up forever. I'm open for all opportunities, you know, but as of right now, this is my passion, my love, and I'm gonna do it as long as I possibly can. I got you, little brother. They're nuts. Cowboys that are doing this are nuts. They're, I don't know very many of them that could stand an office job. They, uh, they're outdoorsy, they're wild and crazy, and their families and their animals come first. They're a crazy combination.